Welcome back to Hey on Track Frankfurt, the Bundesliga podcast covering everything there's to know in the English language about on Track Frankfurt. Um, I'm Chris here in, in the middle of Michigan right now. Uh, real quick ways you can get in touch with the show. Go to halfpod.com uh, for links to all of our social media accounts, uh, previous episodes and other things. Um, our YouTube page where we've got exclusive YouTube comment. Uh, commentary and content coming out multiple times a week. Uh, you can see my beautiful face for radio. And of course, Garrett's <laughs> wonderful locks on there. Um, and other contributors will be on there as well in the coming weeks. Uh, subscribe to YouTube. We hope to go live on there soon with our post match recaps, and we need a certain amount of followers to do that. So check out Half Pod on YouTube. And of course, on X um, at HEF Pod and Instagram at Hey on Trek Frankfurt. Um, before we get into the show today, uh, we want to touch on a current event going on here in the United States. Uh, most of our listenership is in the United States, but if you're not here in the States, if you're in Europe or points elsewhere, um, the southeastern part of our country has been ravaged by a hurricane over the last week, Hurricane Helene. Uh, last I checked, there's almost 130 people dead, uh, double digit death toll in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida other deaths in Tennessee and Virginia. So uh, the people down there are struggling. There's still people cut off from contact uh, with emergency services. They need food, water, shelter. Um, I'm donating some of my October alcohol budget. Uh, if you could donate uh, to the North Carolina Regional Red Cross, redcross.org has a lot of resources. Uh, of course, we got EFC Carolinas down there. Uh, representing Eintracht Frankfurt fans in the Carolinas. Um, just a, a terrible storm that's ravaging a region of, of good people and uh, historic villages just literally wiped off the map right now. So anything you can do to donate your time or resources uh, would be a huge thing for them. And we'll post those links on our social media too. If you have just a few dollars to spare, you know, I, I always say buy your jerseys, buy your t-shirts, but if you could forego one, and put that twenty dollars, thirty dollars. If you got that that John Ben money uh, for the jerseys, maybe put a hundred bucks towards the Red Cross this month. Yeah. Uh, it would be a good cause to help Absolutely. some people out. Okay. So, and I mentioned John. Uh, we'll get back to the show here. It's tough after something dark like that, um, but but we'll keep mm -hmm. doing what we do uh, with an eye on what's going on down there in the south. But John in Delaware, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good, pretty good. Garrett. My mainstay with the mane that stays on top of his head. <laughs> Beautiful flow on YouTube last week. I absolutely love it. I'm going to try to catch up. I got a haircut a couple weeks ago, but I'm going to catch up to you. How about that? You know, it's a glor – you know, at that time when you and I recorded on Thursday, it was a not-so-glorious time for our Adler. a glorious time, though, in the city and around us. Um, shout out also to, of course, John Ben because his Marlins helped make it glorious for us. Um, Thank you. <laughs> um, because at yeah, the yeah. time we're saying this, the Detroit Tigers are back in the playoffs for the first time in a decade. Um, and we got Lions Monday night, which we are getting this done before that rolls. So we got to go forward on all the fields. I've never heard you talk so fast. It's like you have somewhere to be I'm tonight. Pumped up, I am <laughs> fucking pumped up. Let's go. <laughs> There is nowhere else you'd rather be than right here recording Half Pod. I'm certain about that. So let's get right into it. Uh, we are going to do this a little bit chronologically. Um, here's the thing. You did a phenomenal job on YouTube recapping the meltdown that was on track Frankfurt 3, Victoria Pills and 3 in the... Um, in the Europa League last week, last Thursday. So if people want to get a recap of that match and some very candid thoughts, you and I... I think we hit that out of the park. It was raw and emotional, but more so than anything, it set up a question mark for what was Eintracht Frankfurt going to bring to the weekend matchup on the road in league play against Holstein Kiel. Um, we're going to get right into it. A final score of 4-2. to two. Now, it, it wasn't just a straight bludgeoning. A um, few concerns there. Uh, Eintracht Frankfurt starting off nice, getting a one-goal lead, um, and then... I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of been a thing where we give up leads, and I think we all had a few concerns about that after taking a lead into halftime and then uh, promptly giving up a penalty in the second half. John, let me ask you first. Um, Robin, it, it was Cock, right? Uh, that hit the back yep. of the leg. Penalty? No penalty? 
gray area. Uh, I mean, I guess they looked at it long enough to determine there was some contact, but man, that was that was pretty soft in my opinion. I I think that um, Maloney kind of he felt the slight little bump and then kicked his own foot to make himself go down. I uh, on first look, I didn't think it was a penalty. I obviously they gave it straight away, reviewed it, um, determined I guess that there was enough for a penalty. I I think it was pretty soft, but. If there's contact, then yeah, it's a pen. Garrett, penalty? Yeah, I mean, saw, it looks soft, but if you look about it, contact's made with the foot, kind of in the swing through motion. Um, you know, it's funny in a way just because Dino and Kralsha were even talking about not committing those mental errors um, after Thursday, and w- that's another thing that we committed. Um we could have had even more later on, but thankfully we were spared like a couple minutes later. So it's one of those mains like, yeah, it sucks in a moment, but hopefully we can learn from it. Yeah. And, and I agree that contact in the box, it wasn't enough for a penalty, but when you do it from behind any contact with a lower leg, with a guy who who's one-on-one with the keeper without that contact, that that's going to get called all day. So I bitch about it as a fan, but as a pseudo analyst here, uh, it was the right call to make. Uh, let's go back to the goal that opened it, though. Omar Marmouche, a solo effort, speed down the left side, shoots low and to the near post. I know we we've seen a lot of Hugo Ekatike, uh, but Marmouche kind of says, "Hey, don't forget about me." And if anything, he's showing just why this offense is so dangerous. Without Ekatike in the lineup with that that ankle injury. Um, I thought Marmouche did a great job of taking control up front. Garrett? Yeah, I think it's it's one of those things where I feel like, and maybe when you and I were talking in August, just before Dortmund, a lot of us, a lot of the like, what are we looking forward to this year? Not just in the Eintracht Frankfurt circles, but outside of the Eintracht Frankfurt circles. It's Hugo Akatike, Hugo Akatike, Hugo Akatike. Deserved talent, everything like that. Oh my God, Bush is like, I'm right here, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> because last year was his year where it was kind of a middle finger year to Wolfsburg and all, I think, because maybe he felt like he wasn't, other teams gave up on him. So now I think we're seeing that more and more. So it, it's, it's, you know, when you got a good wave, ride it. Yeah, I agree. Um John, not to be outdone, uh, another guy that has looked good in the early season but had a hard time breaking through, Igor Matanovic, uh, puts on track ahead 2-1 to one in the 47th minute. I mean, coming out of the half, something that was a theme this weekend uh, was coming out of the half and scoring quick goals. But that Matanovic goal, um, Omar Marmouche on a corner, which we I think we didn't score a single goal <laughs> in the league from a corner last yeah. season. There was that questionable one in the last match, which I wouldn't say it was from the corner. But, um, yeah, I mean, just to see the amount of traffic in the box, it was clean, no pushing or pulling. And for Matanovic to get up and, and put that on target and give us a lead at a critical point uh, felt good, didn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, that was just pure center forward play right there. He made a great run separated himself enough from the defender and headed the ball right between the goalie's legs. Nothing the goalie could do. Um, Really great corner from Marmouche, too. And I think his corners have been kind of a question mark for us over the past couple matches. Um, I think we've seen when Chaibi's taking the corners, they've been a little bit better. But that one was a perfect ball into Matanovic. And, I mean, quite frankly, Marmouche was just, as the English like to say, unplayable that game. What what an amazing performance from him. Yeah. So uh, Frankfurt goes up 2-1 to one in the 47th. And then we're like, all right, let's settle in here, put this one away. Uh, not so fast. Garrett, uh, 50th <laughs> minute, Frankfurt fails to clear the ball uh, off a corner kick for Kiel. Uh, too much traffic in front of Santos. I I mean, there's a lot of traffic in there. It's hard to blame a goalie when the shot comes from six, seven yards through traffic. But that was a tough one to swallow, right? When you think we're taking control of the game, isn't it? Kind of a repeat of what we were saying earlier. Um, mental errors. And you have that moment like, all right, guys, let's not fuck up. Well, we fucked up. <laughs> 
Yeah, and and you know, um, I think it was probably hard for Santos to see that shot as well. Obviously, it went yeah. right through to Hood's legs, but also maybe to Hood probably should have been able to actually block that shot. But still, I think Santos should have known that that was going left, and he kind of started to go more to the right. Um, it was still a hell of a hit, though. Yeah, and we're going to talk about Dehoud a little more in, in a little bit. Um, but then at that point, it's 2-2, entering the final third of the match. And uh, sometimes when you need a hero, he shows up, and the name on the back of the shirt is Marmouche again. Um, <laughs> from that caution spot on the left, benefits from a, kind of a deflection off the defender's leg. Um, and then the, the finale was that in the... 75th minute or so, somewhere around there. Was that Christensen that hit the long ball over the top to Marmouche? Yeah. Absolutely that was beautiful. A beautiful pass. Yeah. And Marmouche oh. pushing it into the box and, and kind of on a stumble. He knew Tuta was there. Uh, you saw him put his eyes up a couple seconds before, but a nice alley oop and slam mm-hmm. dunk for Tuta. Just I mean, kind of a good icing on the cake goal. Some good movement back to front. Um, overall, a 4 2 victory is. You know, we'll we'll take it. It's not always easy. I hate giving up leads. We did it in Europa League. We did it twice in this match. Um, but we learned from it. We adjusted. Garrett, I want to talk about substitutions. Uh, Amanda got the start, and who comes from it comes in for him uh, early start of the second half. Uh, Utsun for Bembe, Gota for Matanovic. And what I liked is after we had a two goal lead. Um, the changes after that, Canal for Achaibi and Shkiri for Larson, um, bringing more speed on the pitch, bringing more two-way defending and guys that are comfortable on the ball so that when we did have that advantage in possession, uh, we had guys that were reliable with it. They weren't bound to turn it over. So I was pretty happy with Dino's substitutions. What were your thoughts on the Dehoud substitution? I think it's a smart move when, you know, we're moving the ball. We were moving the ball well on the side, along the sides, especially that left hand side. Uh, Teot in for in Cuckoo as a left as a fullback, I think really helped because it's at first part of me is wondering, especially when I did the rewatch, because I was struggling to stay up for the first part of that uh, during the live feed. I was a bit <laughs> wondering about Dina and Bembe playing on the left as a right foot. But it makes sense when you see how much pace he has to burn. And, it, you know, there's questions that maybe we could ask about other people not being in at that. But that could be a discussion for another time if we keep seeing this happen. I think there was a good purpose. And that allowed maybe Marmos to stay a little bit more centrally with Matanovic rather than try to also drift out left. Where you create this space where Kiel can uh, take in. Dehoud is somebody that... He's somebody that hasn't had a good run of matches out for a, for a few years now. It's either been injuries or anything like that. But I think on Thursday, I like what he brings as far as the distribution and the vision and kind of that. Mm-hmm. It's like scary, he's he's like scary, but with a little more vision. And I think that can be useful when you have a young engine like Larson next to him. But I also understand playing Tuta holding because I think there's something about that Tuta. And this is also, I think, a good response from Tuta, too. Because I think Tuta, Tuta might have had some, a lot of hand in the collapse on Thursday to an extent. But I think he responded well. And getting a goal is great. Um, so I think it's the subs were good. The response was good. We didn't lose our edge. And that was, I think did we learn from Thursday in that regard? Yes. Can we continue to maintain what we learned and not repeat what we saw, you know, a few days prior? Yeah. I, I think also go ahead. Um, with, with Tuta um, playing in that six role, I think he did a good job and, and it was his ball to Marmouche that released him for the first goal. Really, really nice. Um, but changing out Amenda for, Dehoud at halftime I think was a very necessary substitution obviously Amanda was on that yellow already and quite frankly wasn't having the greatest of games so you put in an actual midfielder in there put Tuta back in the back line where he's solid and came up with the the fourth goal which was very nice yeah great response from Tuta 
Yeah, I think Tutu is being asked to do some things that he hasn't in previous years. Uh, it's a sign of not just his maturity as we met him as a young player. Now he's more experienced, but also a leader on this team. Uh, he's, if not the longest tenured, not, you know, counting Timmy Chandler, like of those that <laughs> play regularly, um, probably the, the longest tenured player on this team, not named Kevin Trapp. So I feel like that's a sign of growth from him as we talked about him moving to the six on and off that, you know, he he's not entirely comfortable at all times, but you saw his contributions here um, and some of the question marks we have on defense still need to be worked out. Um, but the fact that that guys are standing up and making plays, I mean, that ball from Christensen was was right on Marmouche's oh. foot. It was just a thing of beauty. And the way that that opened up that play uh, to finish and put this one away, icing on the cake for a weekend that, frankly, a lot of us had questions about. The way that meltdown happened, the way that Europe always seems to affect us um, on the following weekend, I think a lot of us were were really, you know, clutching our pearls in this one because it just hmm. i mean it felt like one of those days where you're going to be using language that that your mama wouldn't like um but the way things played out in the end guys grew up they filled in the roles they needed to and they put that one away so right as the men were putting it away uh the women came up to bat uh sorry i know we we got other stuff to talk about but we're on a timeline right Derek? hell yeah we got 56 minutes baby until kickoff <laughs> <laughs> So I track Frankfurt Frauen uh, playing host in their biggest early season matchup of the season so far. Um, I track Frankfurt Frauen three and Wolfsburg nil. Uh, packed house, packed, packed house at the Stadion on Brenton Abad. Uh, this is another one where I think with what was going on with the men's side and the questions we had there, this one might have gotten overlooked a little bit. Um, but Wolfsburg had a little bit of a shaky start to their Bundesliga season. Uh, Frankfurt getting knocked out of Champions League, kind of down a little bit. Not as good of TV coverage as we had last year, so I'm a little bit out of the loop there. Um, but as soon as I got tuned into this one, maybe five, ten minutes in, I noticed that Frankfurt was carrying the play. Um and I go and look at the stats, and Wolfsburg had a lot of possession. But through the first 20 minutes, they didn't have a single shot on target. Uh, this is not the Wolfsburg that we've been accustomed to the last few years. One of the strongest teams in Europe, uh, top one or two in the Bundesliga. I might regret saying that later on. But for right now, uh, the women of Frankfurt absolutely took it to them, John. They They did. They really dominated a lot of that game. So one of the things that, that grabbed me pretty quick, I tuned in um, just after Sophia Kleiner and picked up a yellow card. Uh, probably a deserved yellow card uh, in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> um, but we played on two players getting yellow cards in the first 17 minutes. Uh, Kleiner in the 7th and Walter in the 17th. And they played deep, deep into the second half on on yellows. Um, and Kleiner maybe could have gotten a second one, definitely wouldn't would have gotten a first uh, with that pull she had on the back of the jersey in the second. But what I saw was poise and conviction from this team all day long. Um, they, they weren't perfect. Uh, passing percentage was pretty weak, uh, but they got seven shots on target. Um, they were shooting from every direction. They were taking advantages of the opportunities. Um, as far as scoring, there was no score until late in the first half. Uh, clear handball inside the box. At first, I thought the referee was not going to call it. Um, she kind of hesitated, but she pointed to the spot. Um, Sarah Dorson commits, converts the penalty uh, low and left to Merrill Fromes, which is a thing because I had to go back and look at this. After we scored two goals, two goals low and left against her, I looked at some of the goals against when she was with us. Low and left is the place to shoot on her. And it's amazing. I didn't pick up on that before. I think we have an episode uh, title because when you think of how the first goal that Mama scored, was that low and left also? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Low and left. There you go. Book it, Nathan. Book it, producer Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> um, second goal, and, and this is a theme for Eintracht this week too, Right out of the tunnel in the second half, scoring goals. Nicole Aniomi, 18 seconds in the second half, 
pressure, um, quick pressure up high, deep in the Wolfsburg end. Reutler picks kind of picks it off, not maybe not an intended pass, but deflects it in the direction of Laura Frygang, Annie Omi, kind of a Marmouche to Tuta style slam dunk. Uh, <laughs> you give Annie Omi the ball six yards out with a keeper on the move, and she's not going to miss. Um, 2-0 at that point, I was still a little bit concerned. Like, where is this Wolfsburg at? Um, but then in the 59th minute, uh, Annie Omi puts it away, a shot from the top edge of the box, 18 yards out. Now, here's where we, we start talking business. I know this isn't the same Wolfsburg we're accustomed to, and they're not going to do this all year. Um, is it too early to look top two, John? Ooh. Well, you know, Garrett and I both predicted us to get second this Damn year. Right we did. And quite frankly, my thought on that was, <laughs> and, and my thought on that was that, you know, Wolfsburg was likely to have a down year. Um, and it's kind of looking that way so far. I was a little, actually more than a little, quite worried going into this game because of how much Wolfsburg completely dominated their uh, Champions League qualifiers against Fiorentina. I think they won that by aggregate of like 13 or something insane like that. Yeah. And um, they didn't really look super dangerous. Uh, their first shot on target was was a nice shot by Brand, but when Johannes just parried that away, it kind of killed a lot of their momentum, and we continued to to dominate the game. And actually starting Anyomi was huge because she's probably our best player, and it showed today. She was absolutely lights out. Yeah, I think so. Um, Garrett, have you had a chance to see this match? Yeah, so I turned it on. So Kiel ended with Frankfurt in the monitor. I went to the Frauen. Um, I thought it was at 11.30. I forgot that it was at 11. It took me a minute <laughs> because I had to, like, it wasn't on design. Also, got, let's let's get this out. Let's get this out right away because y'all didn't talk about it yet. <laughs> you got number two versus number three regularly for the last couple of years, right? And Zahn is all about promoting women's football. Why the fuck is it not on its YouTube channel? Um, what? It, it was on Zahn on the app, but not on the YouTube channel. Had to go to the had to go to the uh, app yeah, yeah, to yeah. Chromecast it, not go to the YouTube. How are we without any like? Oh, go here beforehand. Um, but when I turned it on, I was like John was saying. We were take. We were not sitting back. We were taking this team on. Like Chris said, the place was packed. We have been it's been a it's been a source mm-hmm. of it's so to say that it's been a source of contention, frustration, sometimes maybe the last couple of years of sometimes not seeing wherever the foul and play look like that. Am I wrong in saying that? So to oh, absolutely. Yeah. So no, to yeah. see that that environment. A packed place is a packed place, no matter how big or small. The, the you know the full barn mentality. So to see that packed, motivated people fired up, it adds to that team. John, you were saying in our chat conversations, Nicole Anyomi finally starting, like perfect match for her on there. It tell it's telling also that when she wins the penalty, it's not Laura Fagan that takes it. It's not Nicole Anyomi that takes it. It's not Barbara <laughs> Dunst that takes it. It's Sarah Dorson that takes it. Yeah. It, well, she she yeah, played it well. As too. we know, anybody but Laura Frogging when it's on penalties. <laughs> Chris <laughs> talked about Chris talked about too I will soon say, though, for me calling back out Thursday, uh, Thursday State earlier in the Discord. I'm going to say it's too soon for that because it reminds me of Christmas against Benfica. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Go ahead, John. Oh, no, I was going to say... Um, Going back to that penalty, the work from Roy Reutler to um, get the ball, control it, and put it into Anyomi was really, really amazing. And, uh, you know, having our players just firing on all cylinders like that, it, it really was awesome to see. Yeah. And this was another situation where I thought the substitutions absolutely fit the situation. Um, yep. Ch- uh, Chiba, I want to see more of her. I know she kind of struggled to get integrated last year when she came in late, um, but I really liked what she brought this this time when she came on for sense uh, in the 73rd, 74th minute in there. Like, this is a very deep roster now, 
and the substitutions that we made in the 86th minute, again, uh, Prashnakar coming on for Aniomi, these are possession players to close out a victory. Exactly what Dino did on the men's side. When you can bring Prashnakar off the bench um, and have her come in and, and just kind of take control of the ball, our possession actually went up in the last 15 minutes. When usually teams are sitting on a league on a lead and trying to close things out, uh, our possession went up by about four percent in the last 15 minutes of the game. So they're figuring it out, they're doing it right, and don't underestimate the value of closing out a victory against one of the better teams in the league at home at this point in the season. What it does for your confidence. Um, being number two in the table right now, we might as well jump around the the Frauen Bundesliga. Um, <laughs> Eintracht Frauen sit number two in the table, two points behind Bayern, who, um, here's an interesting one for you. Uh, Bayern, I, I had to do a little research on this because it just seemed too strange to be too true. So Bayern beat Werder Bremen 4-0 to despite going down a player in the fir- 51st minute when the score was only 1-0. So they were plus three after picking up a red card. It's the second time this season they picked up a red <laughs> and extended the lead. Um, they did, I think, on match day one, too. So Bayern is strong. I mean, they're they're playing a player short and extending leads. That's difficult to do. I mean, there's plenty of teams that go down. We saw it on the men's side this week where going down a player <laughs> just has an instant impact on you in a negative way. So apparently Bayern plays better that way on the women's side. So uh, Bayern is tough. At the moment, Wolfsburg is not. Uh, they, they drew their opening match. They lose this one. So at the moment, we've got a lead on them. Now, the, the point we've had an issue with in the past is picking up points against lower-sided teams. And we got one coming up this week on the road. Uh, we'll talk about it in the second half. when They drive up the A3 up to Essen. Um, but we're not out of the woods here. We're not celebrating a top two four weeks into a 22 game season um, but certainly a lot to look forward to other interesting points are on the frown bundesliga uh, freiburg 2 cologne 0 cologne can knock it out of their own way right now i think they might be headed down um potsdam who we were all a little bit high on just because of the name recognition they continue to flounder um three nil loss to leipzig leipzig is one we got to look out for um there's yeah. still a, a point behind Leverkusen in the standings, but that Leipzig group looks tough. And we saw last year what happens when you give them an inch, they take a mile. Uh, that group is really coming together. Um, in the top bottom bottom four teams in the table, there's not a single victory. So there's kind of haves and have nots at the moment. The middle three are, are there, but um, it's still too early to tell. But we certainly put ourselves in the right spot here against Wolfsburg, and there were a lot of eyes on that match. And I think that's good to pack the house and to have a showing like that uh, certainly bodes well for this group going forward. Um, we're going to talk more Bundesliga in a few minutes, but we got our halftime break here, Garrett. You've made it halfway to Monday Night Football. It is time for hashtag what are we drinking? What have you been drinking lately? Um, definitely water for hydration. Coffee at work because it's Always coffee at work because it's the lifeblood. Um, how do you take your coffee, Garrett? What, I've known you for years. Um, most of the time, black. Um, other like this lion shirt that I'm wearing today. Um, other times, um, with milk and like a cafe au lait or cappuccino type beverage. Uh, but yeah, uh, right now I am looking at a giant well uh, Coke from Wendy's. I got a meal on there. I ordered a medium. I think they hooked me up with a large dose. So fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Wendy's needs to hook you up with a sponsorship. I think you're you're hooking them up with free advertising about every week. Dude, it's, it, all I just say is if you want to live on the cheap on there, just be sure you do some sort of physical activity and you can power through it. <laughs> Have you had the pumpkin spice frosty yet? You know, I'm not a huge I'm not as huge of a pumpkin guy as you are. I think we might have talked about Get we here. might have talked about this before. Uh, we might have not. However, the vanilla frosty. No, no, it's chocolate or pumpkin spice. Like serial killers order vanilla frosties. John, <laughs> back me up on this. It's uh, uh, no, sorry, oh, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I need better friends. 
that's what's up. John, what are you drinking? Uh, right now, I actually have uh, some black decaf coffee. But uh, yesterday, I was uh, at the Brig in D.C. watching my Jaguars lose once again. But you know what? They got that Paul and Irv uh, Fest beer on draft. Good so uh, at least there's some positives there. You know, if I followed the teams you followed, I would drink even more than the teams that I follow make <laughs> me drink. <laughs> the Jags, the Marlins, Eintracht Frankfurt, like... You got it rough. You must hate yeah, it's, yourself. It's, it's, it's rough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all in the name of sports. It's all good. I did a lot of shopping yesterday. Uh, as I said at the top of the show, half of my beer budget for October is going down to hurricane relief. Um, but tonight I'm drinking my, this is a new one for me and I actually enjoy it. It fits my theme of, uh, Detroit being a badass city, but, um, from Detroit liquid ventures, a new lager detroit style lager called arsenal of democracy and the can has like some of the most badass can art that i've ever seen on it uh but of course it reminds us that like england's battlefields were won on the playing fields of eton americans were won on the assembly lines of detroit so yeah if you don't like detroit then fuck you <laughs> right, Garrett. If you ain't first, you last, baby. Or you're not in the playoffs. Although, or you're helping teams get in the playoffs. Thanks again, John. <laughs> All right, and with that, we'll be back for segment two in just a minute. Cheers. Welcome back. Segment two, Hey on Track Frankfurt, episode 329. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we've all dedicated to give half of our uh, beer budget for this month to endeavors to help those recovering from the hurricane down south. Garrett, I'm going to need you to give half of your Wendy's budget. How does that sound? I think that can be done. That or I could consolidate my Wendy's Good. and KFC for this month. Good Lord, your liver. It's going to be worse than mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we talked about the Frauen Bundesliga. Let's jump around the men's side for a little bit here. Um, an interesting parallel to the women here. Eintracht Frankfurt, after five matches, sitting number two in the table. Um, the only blemish being that opener, which we can all forget about at this point. Um, but Bayern Munich, they look like the Bayern of old, don't they? Scoring goals and not allowing any. Ugh. I mean, just we knew it was coming. We knew they were going to be pissed about losing the title last year and not just not just not winning it, but being thoroughly embarrassed with a month to play. Um, so we knew that there was going to be and not even getting second either. Yeah, exactly. Um, we knew there was going to be some fight from them. Um, but you know, this was a week where, where they couldn't quite pull out the revenge against Leverkusen ending up with, with a one, one draw. Um, it's not what Bavaria wanted, but I think it's what Eintracht wanted. I mean, it keeps Leverkusen a couple points behind us. I mean, look, we're five weeks in. We're not watching the table and saying, maybe we got a chance at the title. But <laughs> but because we've been here in the past many times this early. Um, mm -hmm. But I found an interesting stat, and I was going to save it for later. But I'm going to bring it up right now because it's a feel-good stat. Um, now i got to get to the right point in my notes. Hmm. So uh, the last time Eintracht Frankfurt won five consecutive Bundesliga matches, was January and February 2021 under Adi Hütter. So the argument could be made that right now, with five matches played and four matches in a row won, uh, we're going into a big league battle against Bayern Munich this coming weekend, which kind of is right where I want. You want a, you, a you chance want an to make parallel? recent history. There's an interesting parallel to that. <laughs> and you know what? Give it to this me. This is now the new fucked up stat of the day. Uh, you talk... Oh, yeah. I missed your cue for the first one. So give me our, our new effed up stat of the week. So that five-game winning streak that you mentioned in 2021 in February, the last of those yeah. wins was at home to Bayern Munich, who we played this weekend at home. 
Was that one of the five to one draws? That was the no. That was a we had a three yeah, nil lead, the... and then Bayern slowly worked their way back. It was three two, I think. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So the point I'm getting at here is that yes, it's early in the season, but the guys are playing good ball in the league, and we talked about the issue we had last year. Garrett giving us some absolutely absurd stats about the amount of points dropped to the bottom six in the table. Uh, we just took three points. As frustrating as it might have been for the middle 20 minutes, we took three points from the worst team in the league. And we're taking care of business right now. So there's all the reason in the world to feel confident going into Bayern, right? Maybe. <laughs> yes, I um, know. I, I'm convinced Bayern's better. I'm not convinced Bayern is title ready yet. No, am I crazy? Bayern is Bayern. It to me right now is right in a good wave of competition for who they've played so far in the league, apart from Leverkusen. What's commendable about this Bayern team right now is Leverkusen took the lead in Bayern over the weekend, and Bayern had to draw back, but. They could have been the ones that they had multiple opportunities to put the game away, take the lead in the second half, but didn't. So this is where I feel like now, as Champions League's kicking in for them, and they're starting to see some teams that you know might poke at them a little bit more. Maybe we're getting them at the right time. You know, if we look at who Bayern has played in the league, uh, Wolfsburg, Freiburg, Kiel, Bremen, Leverkusen. So it's not like they've been playing a who's who of great teams. Outside of Leverkusen, they've been beating average teams. Right. I, John, do, do, how do you feel about Bayern at this point? Um, a little bit different than, than uh, you guys, I think. I don't know. I think company has them playing amazing football. Yes, obviously their level of competition hasn't been amazing, and obviously they completely drubbed uh, Dinamo Zagreb in Champions League. But they really did dominate that game against Leverkusen. Really probably should have won that game by at least a goal or two. And I think it's only a matter of time before their wingers break out even more because they're playing so well. I mean, Elise, Gnabry um, are just off the charts, honestly, right now. And yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty worried about this match, honestly. I think it's fair to say Byron is back. I don't think anyone would disagree with yeah. that. Garrett, remind me who they're prized attacker is and why there's no fear about Byron getting the title back. <laughs> so Michael Elise, uh, Byron activated the release clause that Crystal Palace had for Michael Elise, young, talented French winner, um, who's had some injury prone issue, injury, injury issues over the last few years, uh, but had coming off of his best season ever last year and already looking like he's on another fucking level. Um, as I, I would be too, as John told mentioned to me a couple episodes ago when he's making twelve what twelve million a year this year. Is, yeah, yeah, man, twelve, maybe 12 million. Cloud nine with that. Um, but it's he's a talented player. He's also a young player. Um, can he stay healthy for them? And the thing though, when you a team though, when you play somebody lower and he seems to be that one that's starting to take become that focal point, even more so than a Davies or Gnabry, that means teams can focus their defensive strategy on him too and realize that, okay, yeah, Kane gets goals, but Kane needs service to get goals. So if you shut your distributors down, which I think some teams will do, especially if Leipzig is still maintaining how good they are defensively, which is fucked up. Um <laughs> I think that, mm -hmm. you know, he's on one right now, but there's a lot of football to be played. And then you account international stuff too. The thing though with, with Bayern is obviously, you know, you can shut down Michael Lise and then they've got other wingers that are great. Or you have Musiala, Muller, even Pavlovich um, through the middle. They've got a lot of different ways that they can service Kane. But of course, we all know uh, Harry Kane's aversion to trophies, so hopefully that can uh, continue another year. That's true. But somebody who's, who does not have any aversion to trophies is Vincent Company, And the guy, mm -hmm. the guy comes from a winning pedigree. He knows exactly what to be out there. I think what needs to happen out there, I think a lot of us were like, yeah, you know, he's kind of new to it at this level. It's going to take some time to figure it out. 
but all the guy's ever done his whole career is win. I mean, it, when he arrived at Man City, they were nothing, and he guided them right to the top with a lot of financial support, no doubt. But, I mean, <laughs> the guy is a born and bred winner, and I think that the concerns that a lot of us had that he wasn't going to have the time to gel or guys wouldn't respect him, we were totally wrong on that one. Um, they figured it out, and they figured it out really quick. A couple other interesting notes around the league. St. Pauli gets their first victory, 3-0 over Freiburg. Um, Freiburg's an interesting one. Uh, two early losses in the season. I had them pegged a little bit higher. Uh, I don't know if that's sign of the times, but giving up the first win for St. Pauli is kind of a, a tough one on their side. Um, anything else stand out to you guys this week? Uh, Wolfsburg tying up with Stuttgart. John, you talking about it or about me? Are you going yeah, to talk about the one. one, the big one I'm thinking about, or do you want me to take it? Uh, I think uh, you can take that one. But I was going to say, with in terms of Wolfsburg Stuttgart, you know Stuttgart had to wait until the 90 plus seventh minute to even equalize. Um, that's that's a massive yeah. point to get back for them, but really impressive from Wolfsburg to do that against the Stuttgart side that is really really firing. Um, Pauli beating Freiburg was definitely interesting, but I got to say Pauli looked really good against Leipzig the, the week before and quite frankly had the better chances in that game and didn't give up a lot. So I don't know, maybe, maybe they are a little bit better than I, I thought they might be. I still think they're relegation candidates, but definitely a good signs from them. G man, what do you got? Hoffenheim are fucked. Uh, <laughs> um... <laughs> I will say their anniversary kits were kind of dope, uh, but you're rolling. You're playing out of your mind at home to start a match off against Brighton. Absolutely. One little thing, and my God, did it. It, ma- it made our collapse on Thursday look pedestrian. <laughs> and yeah. we, that, that we, we talked that. about a, cu- a little bit. Chris, I don't know if you've if, – well, we talked about it, I think, briefly when we recapped our Frankfurt-Hoffenheim match. John, you and I talked about it a little bit when it was the two of us on air uh, a little bit after that. There's not a lot of good going on at that club right now, more so, no. than, more so than there's ever no. been. And is that – is it becoming a – too much of a boiling point? Is the cauldron about to burst? for this side this year due to everything on and off the pitch. And uh, it looks like Matarazzo is on the hot seat now, as he should be, due to uh, probably should have taken the U.S. job when he had a chance. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, it's a it's a hot pot ready to boil over there. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, they're one bad loss away from something really – dangerous happening happening to their season um i promised garrett we'd be done in time for the lions uh because you know we don't have brian here to talk about patrick mahomes and that one man show so we're going to keep it focused here on the lions and how amazing we are better for brian's sake anyway <laughs> uh we're going to continue segment two here and look at the upcoming europa league matchup uh we're not going to go through the europa league table because it's like 30 teams long this year um <laughs> but a matchup this week frankfurt's first matchup on the road in europa league play against uh besiktas i i fuck up that name every time even though i've read it a hundred times <laughs> it's a difficult one it is um Going to Istanbul, uh, one of the, the finest stadiums in Europe, if I may say. Um, my company helped design it, so I'm legal, <laughs> legally required to say it. Um, 3 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S., 1900 in some Central Europe. Those that are not familiar with this side, um, they are part of the big three in Turkish football. As I got jumped on in the Discord chat for saying earlier, I have to qualify there third of the big three they're not a galatasaray or fenerbahce um, but they still won 21 league titles 16 turkish super leagues 11 turkish cups um it's it's an environment unlike any other there uh i think we have a problem going in there 
because we don't adapt well to midweek matches coming off of a, a home victory. I couldn't get all the math put together in time, but when we win on a Sunday and then go into Europa League play the following week, we tend to have an emotional letdown. Now, I also said that we were going to have a home meltdown this weekend coming out of a meltdown in Europa play last week. So who the hell knows what's actually going to happen? Um, but where are you guys at going into Thursday? Not looking ahead to Byron on the weekend, but looking at Thursday's matchup in Istanbul. John, how do you feel? Um, I feel, again, differently than I think everyone else in our Discord. Everyone seems pretty... Uh pretty worried about this match, but man, Besiktas just doesn't seem to take Europe seriously. Last year in the Conference League, in their five group stage matches, they had one win, which was in the very last game on the road, four losses, including a 5 nothing loss at home to Club Brugge, and one draw. I, and their campaign before in the Champions League, a couple of years before that, lost all six of their games pretty poorly. I, I mean, look, they've got a, a pretty good attack, obviously bringing in Rafa Silva and Chira Immobile. You know, they've got a uh, Milot Rashitsa up there, but that midfield doesn't really offer a lot. And I think there are definitely con- some concerns on their back line. I, I think it's going to be a difficult game, but I'm not super, super worried about it, honestly. You know, let me give you some perspective there. It's interesting you mentioned that they don't take Europe seriously. Um, of the stats I did compile of teams that have played more than 150 games, in European competition. For perspective, Eintracht Frankfurt has played 168 games in Europe with a 53%, 54% winning percentage. Um, among teams that have played 150 matches, they have one of the lowest winning percentages. 244 matches played, only 37% winning percentage. For sides that have played 150 plus matches, that's the fourth lowest winning percentage. So they get to Europe frequently. They don't win there a lot. Um, Again, what happened over the last 50 years has no impact on what happens this Thursday. But there is something to be said about a pedigree. You can win domestically to qualify, but once you get there, you really struggle. Uh, Europa League, their winning percentage is a little better at 43%. uh, But this is a little bit different, Garrett. I think you're a little more high on our chances this weekend, aren't you? The way I see it is this. Yeah, it was frustrating for us that we went into and we blew a 3-1 lead against the Victoria Pilsen side. It rattled me so much on air that I kept confusing Victoria Pilsen for Sparta Pro- Slavia Prague. Shout, shout out to Nathan <laughs> for, the post, uh, for the post edits on that. Um, but when you look at Besiktas, they went to Amsterdam and got fucking smashed the fuck up 4-0 oh. by Ajax. Oh. So, you're, so yeah. now you're going in. It's not like they don't spend money. They, you take a look at their starting lineup that they had today. They got talent. Um, the thing about it is this. This is why I feel like for all of our frustration that we have and Dino's frustration and Marcus Kroos' frustration and the lads' frustration for probably how Thursday ended – Let's look at it this way. We are you're going into a hostile environment. Any Turkish club is a hostile environment, especially an Istanbul club and Besiktas. But it is going to be possibly to be just as hostile for the, their own supporters on Besiktas, depending on the results go. So mm-hmm. I think you're going to see a Besiktas Absolutely. side who's going to try to go for it. Maybe try to be like, hey, we got to make this right. Especially because even as big as that fucking table is that Chris talked about, they're pretty low right now after that ass woman. So they got, yep. they're going to try to go for it and, and maybe a little too much. And that falls perfect for who we have playing. Um, also, on a, look, on a selfishly for a local matter, and I dropped this in the Discord, but many people do not know that Besiktas... <laughs> uh, hired a new video analyst this summer, which was Detroit City FC's first team assistant coach. So for that reason, Dino, lads, you have a job to do. Go to Turkey and whip some ass. I'm pretty certain you have are a... the only person listening to this <laughs> podcast that knew that. I mean, I knew that. I didn't know that, and I'm a season ticket holder for Detroit City. <laughs> John, what were you going to say? I think I broke him. You broke John. Now, um, 
my take on this one is my concerns uh, regarding this one come down to our own side. I'm not going to worry about, about Besiktas. Uh, my concern is that Santos' first road game in Europe, um, and it's going to be on the road in front of – we're behind a defense that has struggled a little bit to keep its organization, not not allowing a lot of goals against, um, but just enough of a balancing act to be concerned at times. So if we can weather the first half and come out with a draw or a lead at halftime, then I'll feel a little more confident going into the second half about our chances to win it. Uh, John, we got you back? Yeah, um, I was just going to say two things. One, that game against Ajax, they looked horrible. Yeah. Um, they also just played today. They played all of their best players so they're and played them for almost the entire game. So they're going to be a little more tired, I think. And then also their head coach is uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, who we beat in the Europe. So League let final. me ask you this question because you brought it up with the Van Bronckhorst. Uh, Kit-wise, Besiktas either wears all white, white and black stripes or they have a black away so are if you guys were the guests are we going to go bestia on blanca aka the haynes tees as uh producer nathan has mentioned do or do we bring out the hunter orange or do we see the black kits from sunday i just want to remind you you you're trying to hurry through this episode to get to monday night football and you're talking kids <laughs> just that's an there. important question that needs to be asked <laughs> john do you have an opinion on that um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the orange kits for this game, uh, just because I think Besiktas will probably wear their um, white and black striped kits, um, either that or they will wear their black kits, so possibly the white, but I think we'll end up going orange this game. I feel like if they were going orange, they would have publicized it for the traveling support to align with that. Possibly. But anyway, yeah. um, by the way, Besiktas is currently third in the Super League Uh but they have one match in hand on the two teams above them, the other two uh, traditional Istanbul sides. So they're right there with the top of the league domestically. Um, but like you said, they have a big hill to climb in the Europa League table thanks to that goal differential. We'll dive into the Europa League table at another time because it is just long and complicated, <laughs> especially after one match. It really doesn't matter at this yeah. point. Yeah. Um, but going into the weekend, that's Thursday. Now we got to look ahead to Sunday with another Eintracht Frankfurt doubleheader. Uh, the first one, 8 o'clock a.m. on the East Coast, 1400 uh, Central European time. <sighs> Eintracht Frankfurt Frauen at SGSS. And as I said, the A3 can be a pain in the ass driving north out of Frankfurt. <laughs> um, I hope that bus leaves a little bit early. But, uh, guys. <laughs> This is a matchup we shouldn't be too worried about, um, except Essen has a thing for standing up and kicking higher team, higher table teams at the most inopportune times. How worried are you, John? Yeah, I I was about to say, you know, Essen is always a trap game. They they're a well run side. Obviously, they don't really have the means. And um, they lost one of their best players in Piljic over the offseason, but, you know, really didn't get rated as hard as I thought they would. So they've still got mostly the same team as last year, and we saw how well they did in the table as well. I think it's a game we should come away with a victory in, but Essen is never an opponent to be taken lightly. Yeah. Go out, um, his story and prior versions of the Moody Diva sees us slipping on appeal on Sunday at Essen. I think we're trying to take that next step and progress beyond that. Um, keep the momentum going. I think they will. Yeah. Um, we got Freiburg the following week, and I think there's that one's going to be on a Monday. So there's a good opportunity here with an extra day off um, to get a little bit of – run the legs out a little bit further uh, from the horses if we have to. Um, and then also if we get a chance and we get up and we can do some rotation, then I'm certainly in support of that too. Um, but my whole thing is like how much better we played when we're playing out front. It seemed like last year we spent so much mm -hmm. time playing from behind and, uh, the women's side, especially they just, they didn't have the depth to be playing from behind every single match. 
And now that the depth is on our side, um, I'd like to see them play out front so that matches like Wolfsburg yesterday that they just put away in the second half become a regular part of the process. And that's how we're going to finish number two is going on the road and getting a two or three goal lead and then throwing it on ice in the last 30 minutes. Um, I'm confident enough in this one to project a three to one victory. What about you guys? I'm going to go ahead and say two to one. Try tested and true, two nil. I hate picking clean sheets. I was going to do it, but I'm going to let yes. I'm going to let you take the fall for this one, guys. We we missed our predictions uh, for the match in Istanbul on Thursday. Anyone want to venture a guess for oh, that boy. one? I was going to say uh, three to two Eintracht. Two one Eintracht. I'm still not convinced. I'm going to say two to two. Um, but I think if Santos has a big game, if the defense is organized more than maybe I'm going to give them credit for, then it can be a victory. But for now, I'm going to be conservative and say two to and, two. And uh, we're going to right. tease because uh, be on the lookout also later on Thursday or Friday for another episode of Recap the Adler Europa on, on our club's YouTube. Yep. Yep. And if you. Uh, uh, if you haven't had enough after two matches by mid morning on Sunday, we got one more. Let's go! Eleven thirty, eleven thirty Eastern time, eighteen thirty in Central Europe. The boys are coming back from Istanbul and they're going to host the evil Bayern Munich at the Wallstadion. Guys, I told you last time we won five consecutive, January February twenty twenty one. Can history repeat itself? I say, go, all right, John. There you go. Uh, oh no, I was gonna say I I don't think that will happen. I think we're gonna be beaten pretty handily. Uh, I was gonna say four to one Bayern. We got nothing. We're not gonna be the side with anything to lose. I think there's gonna be more pressure on Bayern coming into the Vol Stadion on Sunday. So let's play free. Um, Chris, remember when we had that big ass therapy session at like 10 o'clock Eastern on a Wednesday night after we got freaking embarrassed by Saarbrücken. And then the next match, and then the <laughs> next match we went out and beat Bayern Munich five to one, because that's what the Lana Shiva does. Um, I predicted a draw in that match. And for the sake of manifestation, I'm going to also predict a draw in this match, <laughs> but hope for more. Now, I have a question here as I give my prediction. Are we allowed to give two predictions? Because mine has a little caveat. If we can come away with a victory um, in Turkey on Thursday, I feel more confident in coming home and getting a victory against Bayern. But if we go out and we're flat and get a draw or less, then I'm not convinced we're coming home with any sort of motivation. Uh, I guess I have to pick one. And since I did pick uh, a draw, on Thursday, I'm going to pick a two to one loss at home against Bayern. I don't want to. It's just the reality of it. Bayern is too good right now. We're a good side. We are a deep side. We're a side with potential to qualify through Europe. But I think we're going to see the difference between a top of the table team and a team that's simply in contention for top four at this point. So there's yeah, and like there's no shame in that either. Our- no, not at all. And and our opponents lately in the Bundesliga haven't been the greatest. I know we played a decent game against Dortmund. Um, obviously came away with a loss. Bayern is is a different animal this. I though. think it's like um, yeah. I look at it this way. It doesn't get any easier after Bayern. You got Leverkusen after the break. So oh, no. Um, yep. You know what? I feel like last year's guy, last year's squad loved Bayern, but then you had Aberdeen in midweek and they lost their shit. And um. This year, I mm. feel like when you see Dino looks more confident, he he sounds he comes off more confident in his the style of play is more confident. The guys are looking more confident on the field. Look, regardless of the result, just give me a side that fights on Sunday, and that's all we want. To, and that's what we want to see. At least you can take that if you fight to try to get something into that. You can at least take that as a good thing going into the international break. Yeah, you know this. This is going to be a team that's a lot of prove it all season long. They're they're not going to be doing it pretty. 
Uh, it's going to have to be gritty all the way, and you're going to have to grind it out. If they're going to beat a top of the table team, it's going to be because they grind it out. So I'd like our chances more going in there if we're feeling good about the way we're playing lately. Um, we're going to be in the hunt. I don't think there's a matchup this year. Certainly if we play well against Bayern, um, I don't think there's a match where we're going to be out of contention before the ball is even kicked. Uh, so certainly anything can happen. Um, Garrett, I promise you'll be out of here. Teams are getting on the field at Ford Field. We got TVs to get to. Where are we finding you on social media? Okay, here we go time. Uh, locals, uh, personals, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, at GM Comats. I'm Jack Brent for Detroit, Detroit SKA. Not sure if we're doing anything Sunday at 1130. Be on the lookout. Uh, anyone that wants to listen to some hot Detroit sports sicko takes, uh, the Majors Detroit at TMSNX Detroit, uh, at YouTube at the Majors TV, Channel 451 for your Detroit City sicko content, winners of three in a row and beating in their last five, uh, at 451DET at Channel 451 on YouTube. I think that's it. We. We're going to get Garrett his own segment just for his shout outs at the end of the show. <laughs> Which is like every other show that I do. So it's just fitting. <laughs> also, like and subscribe John, where on YouTube. You at? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Ben underscore J Ben. That's Ben with two N's. On Instagram at John Ben 33. And uh, I'll also be in DC this uh, coming weekend. Uh, I think Matt uh, from EFC DC is trying to put together a watch party probably in Northern Virginia. So, uh, you know, be on the lookout for that. If you're in the DC area. Well, I kind of want to fly in for that now. Oh, oh man. All right. Uh, I am on Instagram at Chris and Monroe Peloton discord, Twitter at C in the D three one three. And of course the show half pod.com. And don't forget pledge half of your, October alcohol budget to the Red Cross or any relief agency helping those in the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida, everywhere ravaged by Hurricane Helene. Uh, they really need our help right now. So uh, reach out to them in EFC Carolinas. Uh, we're thinking about all of you guys down there. So until next time, uh, enjoy the games this weekend. We will talk to you on Thursday, Garrett. Thursday, we will recap on YouTube everything that happened Thursday in Istanbul. Until then, choose. I mean, it felt like one of those days where you're going to be using language that, that your mama wouldn't like. I am fucking <laughs> pumped up. Let's go. <laughs> hey,